The words in some chosen place spoke to me. Uh, actually, it was, wasn't so much the words that spoke to me in the beginning. It was the concept of in some chosen place. Um, I had been walking down at what we call the trolley uh, uh, trail down here in Stony Creek, and I had run into Neil Robinson at the time, and he mentioned to me, he says, you know, uh, why don't you think about writing a piece for our choir, because the Stony Creek Singers always did a Christmas concert every year, which my wife conducted, my wife Martha conducted, and I always wrote a little piece for them. And Neil suggested that, uh, why don't I think of writing uh, something a little bit more uh, larger in scale? And I said to him, I said, you know, great minds really think alike, because I was kind of thinking about that too. And he said, did you have any idea? And I said, yeah, I actually was thinking about Stony Creek itself. I mean, the place really inspires me uh, just for the type of people that are here, the beauty of the, of the, uh, of the landscape, and just the whole so-called Stony Creek experience. So at first I tried to find poetry or writings about Stony Creek, which they really didn't exist per se. So then I decided that I would find um, um, aspects of Stony Creek, uh, the quarry, um, the type of people who were here, um, what the creek kind of stood for as, as far as a, a, a humanistic standpoint, even as an American uh, town or American uh, village. Uh, and I found poetry to fit uh, those different aspects of, of the piece, which I divided into seven movements, and uh, uh, it, seemed to really, uh, it seemed to really work from that standpoint. In Some Chosen Place is a complex piece. Um, as most people have said about my music, it's, it's deceivingly simple or straightforward, but then when you begin to play it or put it together, it's very complex. And that's a testament to a lot of the people from this town. We use amateurs, mostly in the, in the choir, and they have done a terrific job. These were people that put in a lot of time to read music that was unfamiliar, also with frequent meter changes, which is something that amateur musicians are not really used to, to doing. Even professional musicians, if they play in certain contexts of, of, of certain classical music are not used to the meter changes that my that this music particularly uh, uh, makes demands on the musician for so it is very gratifying to have the people who performed in in some chosen place to put the time and effort that it took to uh, to bring off such a successful performance my wife and I came to live in Stony Creek um, a little bit over 30 years ago uh, we lived in Branford for about four or five years, and uh, we discovered a piece of property that was for sale, and we built a house there. And my wife, Martha, came to work at the Stony Creek Congregational Church as the organist choir director, where we met a lot of really nice people who are our friends to this day, and especially met Judy and Neil. And uh, uh, that's pretty much how we, we, we came to the to live in, in Stony Creek, and I don't see us, us moving away anytime soon. We really like the area, and we really love the people. Uh, I used to be a freelance musician in New York City, which is where I was born and raised. Uh, played saxophone, clarinet, and a little flute, played in Broadway shows, and did a lot of uh, arranging, and uh, played everything from weddings and bar mitzvahs to recording dates and, and things like that. Uh, I retired from that business in the 80s and became a piano technician and I have my own business where I uh, tune and service pianos uh, uh, in uh, basically the shoreline area and uh, you know, as far as New Haven and even as far as uh, Hartford. And that's pretty much how I earn my living. I also publish uh, some of my compositions and earn a little bit of music from, a little bit of money from, from doing that. Uh, so that's pretty much what I do. Uh, I got into, the mu into music, um, I don't know, it seems, to have, uh, it seems to be with, music seems to have been with me from the very beginning. My parents were both 
they didn't play instruments, so to speak, but they, um, they loved dancing. My mom always had the radio on. We listened to WNEW AM at that time where they would play tons of Frank Sinatra and Bing Crosby and all those type of things. And I always remember listening, even when I was a young child, to uh, that uh, music and uh, picked up the saxophone uh, when I was in fifth grade. And uh, I guess there's an old saying about music that you don't choose it, it chooses you. And I always felt that music kind of chose me from the very beginning. Uh, and uh, I always, uh, my teachers used to criticize my playing because they'd say, that's not what the composer wrote. And I was always doing things with the music. And, they, and one teacher finally told me, she said, you know, you should be a composer where you can write your own music. I said, well, actually, I never, th I never thought of that. So uh, that's kind of, I've always been a performer, but I've also always been a composer at heart. The piece itself speaks to, some th to my own philosophy about, about life. Um, the, the, the work is, is really about community. It's about people, uh, specifically about an American community, but it could be for any community in the world, really. It's about people come to a place to live and the, this particular place that they live just feels right to them. And um, the, the, the people who came before, uh, like, mo like all the people who came to this country, uh, it, it took a lot of uh, guts and determination to get here. And once they got here, they wound up finding a place that um, was blessed, so to speak and they found people who, you know, not everybody is great, not everybody is uh, a perfect person, but you, you found people, you found humanity, you found a, a, a town, a, a, a place to live that happens to be beautiful, that happens to have creativity, that happens to have uh, thinkers, intellectuals, artists, uh, uh, working people, um, the complete, uh, cross-section of what you get in, in not only in America but in, uh, in of humanity and uh, that's really what the piece is about the piece is really about the human condition uh, it was not difficult to to convince the the locals so to speak my, and my friends most of them are all in fact all of them are my friends to uh, perform we even were lucky enough to bring some people from the neighboring town of Guilford in who um, uh, had, I had asked to do it uh, to supplement a few of the uh, singing parts. Uh, they were, uh, I, one of the most gratifying things was uh, uh, how uh, much uh, everyone really threw themselves into uh, the work required to, um, uh, to, to bring off a successful uh, performance. Uh, and uh, I am uh, amazed and, and heartened by uh, 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 what people, uh, how they invested their time uh, to, to, to perform this piece. Some chosen place is at the museum, which was originally a, uh, a church. Uh, the acoustics were, are beautiful and very live, but they did present some problems. First of all, we were the first uh, ensemble to perform in this church in probably over 30, 40 years, maybe even longer. And uh, the choir was kind of nestled in what was the altar, and very close confines and the instruments were very close in front of the choir and so getting the balances correct especially in the beginning uh, was a little tricky but that goes with any concert hall you get used to musicians uh, the dirty little secret about concert halls is that every concert hall is not wonderful and musicians know that certain con concert halls have certain traits and that you compensate for those traits so uh, but the fact of the inspiration of being in this particular building, uh, which is now the Stony Creek Historical Museum, and performing here for the first time anyone's performed here in 40, 50 years, uh, was a great honor and uh, was very inspiring in itself. People from Stony Creek uh, um, were giving um, tremendous feedback, even as when the piece was originally uh, premiered in, in, in October of 2005. Uh, it was wonderfully received. We did the first performance at the Congregational Church. Uh, there were people that were turned away who could not get in. Uh, and from that time, every, 
everybody I run into every once in a while always says to me, when are you going to do, when are you going to perform in some, some chosen place again? And I always mentioned to them, I said, well, you know, we'll see what happens, you know, because you really don't know at a piece this size with the commitment it takes uh, for the manpower and also for the financing um, when you could, when that perfect storm of, of circumstances can come together uh, to make that possible. The selection of the instrumentation for uh, In Some Chosen Place uh, was originally for a small chamber orchestra. And uh, due to the realities of budget and, and time constraints for that matter, uh, I edited the score uh, for the second performance, the most recent performance. Uh, instead of using a full string section complement, uh, we used a electric keyboard that, was, that played uh, the string parts on it, which certainly saved a considerable amount of money. And um, also, instead of, there were some instruments that were easier to obtain. Uh, people who I know, my, uh, the, the, uh, Dave Langless, who plays soprano saxophone in my saxophone quartet, the Thimble Island Saxophone Quartet, the, uh, originally the score called for an oboe. Soprano sax is a wonderful double as an oboe. It has very much the same sound. Um, and uh, using a clarinet and um, uh, a trumpet and, of course, percussion, which was very important. Uh, when, you, when you're doing a, a, a small ensemble, uh, to have more, the more different t timber and different sounds that you can get from different instruments is very important. So you try to choose those instruments carefully and that you also want them to be able to blend together too at the same time. What I would like to do with the cantata going forward is have it performed more often, certainly, and I would also uh, like it to get a little bit wider reputation. Uh, Imagine Music is going to publish the fourth movement uh, which is the, uh, the Lord is My Shepherd movement, and uh, we're in negotiations now for them to publish the whole con cantata. Um, and, uh, you know, people have come and asked me to perform certain uh, pieces, movements from it, especially the, the Lord is My Shepherd. A lot of people really feel that, that that can work for a lot of different situations. But I don't write music. I write music because I need to write music. It's, it's, what, I, it's what I do. It's what I always felt that if I'm here for anything on this earth, it's to, it's to write music. And uh, uh, what happens after the music is composed is almost uh, beside the point. Uh, so, uh, but I think uh, at the very least, there are a couple of movements right now from in some chosen place that are, are definitely going to be published next year. And with the possibility of the whole cantata being published, uh, that is a very strong possibility too.